Holy cow, this is like the 10th take. Maybe I can get it this time. Welcome back. It's nice to see you again. In today's tutorial, we're going to be continuing our discussion of color grading in Final Cut Pro. Specifically this time though, I'm going to call out what I've seen every other YouTuber get wrong and what I think is actually something that is completely broken in Final Cut Pro and I haven't seen anybody else call this out. Now if you're new to my channel, you want to make sure to check out my Patreon. That's where I give away extra content, especially when it comes to short films or other creative projects I've made. I give away all of the project files so you can pull them apart, see how I do the effects, how I do the editing, how I do the color grading, all of it. So I'm gonna make sure that that's linked down right below the like button. So make sure to check that out. Let's jump into the project. What I've got set up here is a couple different examples of how you can adjust exposure in Final Cut Pro. Now we're talking about exposure right away because when it comes to your color grading workflow, you start with exposure and white balance. Once you nail those, then you can make some adjustments and you can get your color grade exactly the way you want. The problem is, in Final Cut Pro, I think that the exposure adjustments are actually completely broken. Let me jump in and show you what I mean. In this project, I've got a couple different examples of how you can adjust brightness and exposure, as well as some comparisons to other image and video editing software so that you can see that the way Final Cut does it is clearly wrong. So let's start by showing you this setup that I have right here on the left. What we've got here are three gradients. The middle gradient is just a control so you can see what the normal values look like. And then the top and the bottom are where we're going to apply the color wheels and the color board so you can see the different effect that they both have. Now the most important part of this entire example up here is our luma. You can see in those luma curves over here um, that right now all three gradients are perfectly lined up. They're exact same values. The first adjustment we're going to look at is the beloved color wheels that every YouTuber just praises, and for good reason. It has basically everything you need to do to correct colors and to do a nice color grade all in one place. At the bottom of this panel, we have our white balance tools, and up above, we have our tools that most people use to adjust exposure. These are the brightness controls. You even have down at the bottom, if you scroll, uh, control so that you can make fine tune adjustments. So if you know the exact brightness value you're trying to target or you want it to be really consistent. Let's compare that to the much hated color board. Now, unless you understand what the color board is doing, I don't think you should be using it. The primary reason most people come to it is because you have this exposure control. And it's a nice way to see your shadows, your mids and your highlights and the adjustments that you can make to them all in a row. So if you're going to make a curve, for example, it's really nice to be able to see those points side by side. Here's the problem though. This tool that is explicitly designed to adjust exposure doesn't adjust exposure. And I can prove it to you by looking back at the Lumascopes. With both of these adjustments zeroed out, you can see on the Lumascopes that all of these curves align perfectly. The gradients are exactly the same. Now if I adjust the brightness on this bottom one, you can see all it does is it slides the curve straight up and down. There's no change to the shape of the curve at all. That's a good thing because that's what we would expect from a brightness adjustment. Now if I switch over here to the top gradient and I wanted to make an exposure adjustment, you might think that it behaves like any other image editing program, that as I drag this slider up, it makes the brightest pixels brighter faster than it does the shadows or the midtones because that's what a natural exposure adjustment tends to look like. That's where you'd be wrong though. If you look over at the Lumascopes, you can see that the curves match up identically. All it's done is lifted the pixels the exact same way it did with the brightness adjustment. And that's because that's all it's doing is a brightness adjustment. That means that for practical purposes, there's no reason to ever use a color board because the color wheels do the exact same thing. Plus they have the ability to adjust your white balance all in the same place. Now, before you think that Apple might just have a different opinion of how you should do exposure adjustments, let's compare this to every other image editor. So this first curve is Pixelmator, and you can see that the shapes of the curves are actually different for relatively similar exposure and brightness adjustments. We can also compare this with Photoshop. Photoshop has drastically different curves for exposure and for brightness. And as a final nail in the coffin, let's compare Final Cut Pro with Apple's very own Photos app. And you can see that adjusting the exact same gradient in the Photos app has a drastically different curve compared to Final Cut Pro as well. Now, if we really wanted to, I could go over every single photo editing program that I've compared it to and show you that Final Cut Pro is the one that clearly stands out as the one that's doing it wrong. But just take my word for it, 
it's not doing it the way most people expect uh, exposure adjustments to happen. So the question is, if you're a Final Cut editor, what options do you even have to make a good exposure adjustment as you're correcting your footage? Now one option you might think you have is the color curves, and I've went ahead and applied just a nice curve and made it so that the luma actually matches the luma of a Pixelmator exposure adjustment. You can see that in real footage though, it's just the luma, so you get nice contrast, but it doesn't bring the colors along the way that it's supposed to. Now if you compare this to what I was able to do with color wheels, which is the route that I would recommend most people go, you get a much more natural and a much more pleasing look out of the adjustments you can make with the exposure. Another option that you potentially have is using Color Finale Pro. Now this is a paid plugin, but this is an option that a lot of people like. And if you compare the curves, it actually does more of what you would expect with the exposure where it applies it to the highlights before it applies it to the midtones and shadows. I think it's a little harsh, and because it's a single slider, you don't have a ton of control. So this is a good single slider option, but I don't think it's the best option that gets you the best results. I think the first option that works out really well for most people is to go back to our good friend, the color board, even though a lot of people hate it. And what I was mentioning at the beginning is you have this nice curve shape that you can create by pulling the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights, and it really illustrates the effect that you're trying to have with these brightness adjustments, is you want the exposure adjustment to be stronger in the highlights than in the midtones and the shadows. The only problem with this approach is that if you're going to do white balance next, you have to add a color wheels adjustment, which means you're right back to being able to make the same adjustments all in one space. It just looks a little less nice because they're scattered across this grid of wheels. Now that we've got a basis for adjusting exposure spelled out, let's look at a practical example. Automatic exposure systems often have a problem with shooting in trees. They don't get the white balance right, the exposure's all over the place. And so we're going to fix this pretty broken clip. Now granted, the composition's not great to begin with, but we're going to take it from garbage to actually usable. Let's switch first to a color grading workspace. So if we just come up here to our window, we can go to workspaces and color and effects. And now we're not going to use all four of these because we don't have a lot of skin tones and things we're going to match to. So we're just gonna to switch to one scope. The next thing is I like to switch to waveform and RGB overlay. I think this is easier to see the contrast that we're trying to build up as we're adjusting the exposure. Now that we have our workspace set up, let's take a look at the scopes themselves. You can see from the top and bottom here that we're hitting 100 and zero, which means we technically have a well exposed shot. But in this instance, it still looks really muddy and something looks really off about it. So we're gonna use the color wheels to fix that. I don't know if everybody feels this way, but for me, it's very difficult to work on exposure when the white balance in a shot is just this egregiously wrong. So the first thing we're going to do is play with the temperature, because that's usually the problem in your shot. Now, when you don't have a clear white object to try and identify and get a perfect match on, it might be daunting to decide how you're going to move the temperature. So what I recommend is just grab the slider and pull it all the way to the left and all the way to the right and see which one produces more natural looking colors. And you can see to the left, clearly wrong. Everything is completely blue. But if we pull it to the right, this actually is pretty close to what we want. You can see the colors start looking more natural. It just needs to be dialed in a little bit. So I'm gonna toy with this and I'm gonna pull it over here. You can see somewhere right around here, the yellows and the greens start to look normal again. They start to look less blue. So we're gonna land right about there. And for the tint, we actually are going to do the same thing. But I will warn you, the tint is much more sensitive. It is much rarer that you're going to have drastic issues with your tint. So if I pull it to the right, you can see uh, maybe it's close, but like left is very bad. So in this case, I think we pull it slightly to the right and you can see that the browns are starting to come out as brown. But even this at 19 is still too much and it's starting to look very magenta. So we've got the blues in the waterfall, which is nice, but we wanna get those browns dialed back in. And something around five or six for this particular shot feels pretty nice. And often your tent adjustments, if you need them at all, are going to be in the same ballpark. Now let's jump into the exposure. We mentioned before that the exposure is pretty close to technically correct. We have a broad spectrum from highlights to shadows, but in reality, this is kind of an overcast shot, and we probably actually want more of this shot down in the shadows than we do up in the highlights. 
The other problem is because this was shot with a camera phone, we're gonna end up crushing our blacks and whites. And so we just have to be tasteful about it. So first things first, let's bring down our midtones. This is a darker overcast shot. So we just wanna bring that down. And you can see that it's already starting to help with the contrast a little bit. Um, but we are starting to lose a little bit of detail in the blacks. I'm just trying to play the game of not making too many of these waveforms go beneath that zero line. Now, we've got something that looks pretty close, but let's bring the shadows down separately, and that will kind of control how much of our shot ends up in the shadows. And to me, this feels better, and maybe touch to the highlights, but really, like I said, it's just about bringing some visual interest and some contrast to the shot. You can see if we flick this on and off, we've already made a drastic improvement to this shot. Now the next problem is the composition on the shot isn't that good, so we're going to try to take that to the next level. So if we come down to the bottom to our effects, we're just going to search for vignette, and that will help us draw the focus back in towards the waterfall, which was supposed to be the focus of the shot. With vignette, you can move the center, you just have to be careful with it. It can look really unnatural if your center is way too off center. Uh, and the next thing is we really don't need a blur. I don't know if you can see this, but like it really isn't the effect we're going for. It's not supposed to be out of focus. Really what we want is just a little bit of darken and we want it just on the edges there so that it pulls your eye a little bit closer towards the waterfall. And it's a really subtle adjustment, but I think overall it actually looks really good. So let's flick it on and off and you can sort of see the difference that just that little bit makes. Now that we've helped the white balance, the exposure, and the composition a little bit, now let's get into something that I would consider more in the realm of color grading. So if we come up here and we pick hue saturation curves, the first color we're going to try to fix is our greens. They're just blah. They're in the mid-tones, they're not very contrasty just nothing good about them. If I sample the greens with the Hue versus Luma, it gives us a nice spot where I can pull them down and just make the greens all over our shot a little bit darker. Now if I turn that on and off, you can see the dramatic difference it already makes just having our greens be a little bit darker. I'm gonna add another point here so I can bring the yellows up. I'm just trying to introduce some contrast in our colors. And you can see with the opposing greens and yellows, it does introduce a nice bit of contrast with those dark greens and those brighter, more vibrant yellows. So I think this is already a great start. The next problem with our greens is that they're very yellow. And so if I come in here and sample them in the hue versus hue, I can pull my greens down a little bit and it just makes them a little bit cooler. Now I don't wanna to get too crazy with it because you can start crushing colors really quick, especially with this 8-bit footage. But you can see again, just turning it on and off, it's such a dramatic difference where we started and how the greens look now. Now with all of those adjustments, we can step back out here to the top level and we can turn all of the effects on and off. And so you can see that we really have made a night and day difference between where we started and what we ended up with, which was garbage to something that's actually pretty usable. And this isn't even really pushing the color grade that far. This is just getting something that feels nice, natural, and contrasty. Now our next videos are going to be all about color grading to the next level as well as some VFX, specifically how to get a green screen effect when you don't have a green screen. So if you're interested in those videos, make sure you like and subscribe. Your support does mean the world to me and I can't wait for you to see these next videos. Also, thank you to my first patron, Jason McLaughlin. You are awesome. If you guys would like that backstage content as I'm producing these shorts, make sure to go ahead and support me on Patreon so you can get full access to all those project files. If you have an effect, a title, a transition from a YouTuber, a TV show, or a movie that you would like to know how to reproduce, make sure you let me know in the comments below and I will make sure to make that video for you. And until next time.